Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Miley. It's spelled like Miley, but pronounced Miley. Before you go any further in this video, this is part two of a DIY accent wall that I designed. If you haven't seen part one, go watch that first and then come back here. Now let's get back to designing this functional accent wall. I don't think that is an actual proper interior design term, but I'm not an interior designer. Unless watching HGTV for the last 12 years counts as an interior design degree, then I am an interior designer. Let's quickly recap what we did in part one. What am I doing with my hands? Looking to create a space to put my keys and mail and other small items that didn't have a place to go previously. I hung up a shelf that I added some key hooks to, I hung up some L-shaped hooks for hats, and I made a mail holder. Finally, this was kind of quick in the video near the end, but I did paint and decorate this jar because your girl loves her labels and needed another label in this design. Now that you are all caught up, let's get back to where I left off this design. Hello? Hello? Okay, let's do this thing. In the last video, I stopped the design right here, leaving you wondering what I was going to do next. But the moment has arrived, let's move on. When I originally ran out to the stores, I had picked up these wooden craft boards and this and sign with the idea of making some initial art for above the door. And what I mean by initial art is I wanted to make a J for my husband Jordan's name and an M for, well, me. So, a J for Jordan and an M for Miley. Yeah, I over-explained that one. And in this final section, when I made this design, I actually didn't have any ideas of what I wanted to put there. And after thinking about it, I thought a clock would be nice because it would break up kind of the square and rectangular look of this design. And this is the part of the design that got way more involved because originally I thought, hey, I'm just gonna go out to the store and buy a clock, but I ended up making a clock. But you know, you probably got that from the thumbnail. Finally, that last tiny little section right there. I really did not know what I was gonna put here, so I drew two random rectangles just to kind of fill the space knowing I would come up with an idea later. With the design done, let's jump right into making this stuff. I've seen these nail and yarn art things, great description Miley, but I've seen them online and wanted to give them a try, so I thought two simple letters would be a great start. Mm. Yeah, don't hammer like that. Using these nails, I began to hammer out the basic shape of a J, and I liked the thickerness, thickerness, that is not a word. I liked the thickness of these nails to create a more studded look. Once I had all of the nails hammered in, I tied some dark gray yarn around one of the nails and began to outline this letter. Going into making these letters, I didn't really plan out this process. I just started to hammer these nails in and as you can see, the wood did start to split. So if you were to try this, I recommend using thinner nails, especially if you're using some cheap craft wood. And all of the inspiration pictures I looked at followed a pattern, so I began to fill in this letter with an X pattern. <gasps> I filled in the whole letter, I took a step back and realized I hated the way this looked. Well, 
Not hate, but like the mail holder I made, this just needed to be improved upon. The main thing I didn't like was the sparseness of the yarn. It didn't really fill in the letter like I thought it would, and I also didn't really like the X pattern I came up with. So taking some thin nails, I hammered those in between each one of the thicker nails. I thought this would help add some more posts that I could tie the yarn around, but I went with the smaller nails for two reasons. One, because I didn't want the thicker nails to overpower this, and also I didn't want to further split the wood. And following those same steps, I went around the whole letter, just like I did the first time, but then instead of doing an X pattern, I kind of just started to randomly weave the yarn wherever I saw fit, and I ended up liking this look so much better. And with the J being done, I did the same process for the M. The M that is for Miley. That's, that's me. And with both of these letters being done, it was time to get them up onto the wall. Like my previous items, I first measured out where I wanted them to go so that I knew where to hammer in these nails. I'm really pleased with how these letters turned out. They were super simple to make and I've seen some people do some really creative things with this technique of the nails and yarn, so I'm definitely going to try out some more complicated designs in the future, but for my first go around, I definitely like the way these turned out. And with these two letters being done, it is the moment we've been waiting for making this clock. Why I decided to make this clock, I don't know. I guess I was feeling particularly ambitious this day, and I've also wanted to get into woodworking for a while, and I thought now was my time to try something out. And the clock was easier to make than I thought, and I am really happy with how it turned out and I now have a new obsession. I started out by taking some plywood and making an oval that was 15 by 12. And the oval was just the back of the clock, so it didn't need to be the nicest or prettiest oval you have ever seen. I will mention I'm not totally new to building things. For three years in high school, I was in set building, and then throughout college, I had to take different set slash prop design classes. But that was more building platforms and walls and electric turntables and not making craftsmanship pieces. I'm only mentioning this because I'm not a total beginner. I do know my way around tools, even though I am currently sawing right towards my hand. Uh, yeah, don't do that. But nonetheless, I do consider myself very much a beginner with woodworking, so if you're looking to get into woodworking, I think making a clock is a very good first project. Next, taking these 3 8 square dowels, I cut those to different lengths, the longest being 15 inches and the shortest being 5 inches long, and I wanted to create a staggered, jagged, circular look to the front of this clock and like the mail holder I did do a more in-depth design and plan out each piece and the length it needed to be and if you want to make this clock yourself I will put further instructions in the description down below. Once I had all of these measured out I used a jigsaw and began to cut each one of the pieces over and over and over again. Thank you. 
Yeah, we can skip over this part of sanding each one of the dowels. Now came the laminating part. This was very new to me. I have never done this before and I kind of went in blindly not knowing what the heck I was doing. Laminating is the process of binding the wood together using glue and pressure. And now you can see why I went with an oval shape for the backing. I wanted the oval to be 15 inches long so that each piece of wood fit onto the oval, but I wanted it to be shorter on the sides so that it didn't poke out at the top or bottom. Once I had all the pieces glued to the plywood and together, I took a large clamp and clamped all of the pieces of wood together. Using the clamp, this is when I could tighten that one piece to add the correct pressure to make sure that there were no gaps in between any of the pieces of wood. And see that glue right there, and there, and there? Yeah, I learned that you should use this opportunity while the glue is wet to clean that off because once I let it dry, I had the lovely task of trying to remove it. I let this sit overnight and then removed all of the clamps. This is the part that was truly a learning experience. I thought some 80 grit sandpaper would remove all of that glue. It did not. So I had to switch to a hand planer. This definitely worked better than the sandpaper, but it was still a ton of work. If you have an electric planer or an electric sander, that's definitely the route to go. I didn't have either of those things. But I will say I feel like I learned a lot doing this by hand and now that I've learned what to do, I'm ready for some electric tools. So family, if you're watching this, I do have a birthday coming up. Help a girl out. The next step in putting this clock together, I had to figure out where the center of the clock was and drill a hole. Wow, in my notes I wrote hole and not hole. <laughs> Real smart, Miley. Once I had the hole, not hole, drilled, I traced out where the clock motor needed to go and I began to route out that section of the plywood and the laminated wood. This makes it so that when you hang up the clock, it lays flat against the wall and there is nothing sticking out. I don't have an actual router, I just use this routing bit and my drill. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do this, but it did work for me. And I also took this part really slow because I was afraid if I went too far, I would split the wood. Once the motor fit nicely in that routed out area, I used this sanding bit in my drill. Again, not probably the proper way you should do this, but it worked out great for me. But also I'm probably going to kill my drill pretty quickly if I keep using it like this. Now came the part I was looking forward to the most. And from this very first stroke, I started to see this clock come together and I was super happy with how it was turning out. And this is when the obsession kicked in and now I'm just looking for my next project. So if you have any ideas of what I can make next, let a girl know.
After I was done staining, I let that sit for a few hours and now it was time to put this clock together. I got these clock pieces pretty cheaply at Hobby Lobby. I couldn't find any silver, which is what I wanted, so I spray painted all of the pieces silver. For the numbers, I first mapped out where the 12 and 6 went and then the 3 and 9 and once I had those four numbers mapped out, the numbers in between fell into place. Putting the rest of the clock together was easy. All I did was follow the directions that the kit gave me on how to put the clock all together. And before I hang up this clock, remember those tiny little rectangles I drew? Not really sure what I was going to put in that corner for the design. I decided after making all this stuff to do something a little bit more simple and got some wedding photos printed and framed them and hung them up in the corner. And to complete this design and complete this project, I hung up the final item, this clock. And when looking at all of the top pieces together, I really like the darker stain of the clock and the darker stain of the picture frames, but the letters didn't really match. So I took them down and re-stained them and switched the coloring of the yarn to be light gray with a white outline. But hey, third time's the charm with these letters, I guess. And now, now I am officially done with this project. I really love the way everything came together and I'm super excited that I got to try some new things out. I hope you liked this video and because I am the best aunt ever, I told my nephew he could end the video for me. So take it away, Lawson. Make sure to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to my channel that notifications bell so then you never miss a video and i will see you guys in the next video bye guys